Nigel Benn against another great showman, Chris Eubank. Tonight they sign up for the biggest grudge match in years. The British fight game for years. Chris Eubank, the man they all seem to love to hate, against one of the most devastating punchers of all time, Nigel Benn. Ben is earning a cool million pounds for defending his WBO middleweight crown, but it's pride that's really at stake on November the 18th in Birmingham. Eubank will start underdog, but not in his own mind. His ego is virtually indestructible. I have four, five, six ways to fight him. I can play chess, I can go back, I can come forward, I can dance, I can box, I can slug. You name it, I can do it. I would say I challenge all contenders, competitors. Ben's not exactly a shrinking violet either. He spent most of the day just before the Michael Watson showdown at the Barbers. Like Samson, Nigel found the haircut wasn't a lot of help. Oh, he's gone. So, the big hitter has been hit in the sixth round. And the way he backed off from that punch in the eye, it looked as though he wasn't sure he'd been counted out on his feet there. But the Dark Destroyer steered away from his own wreckage towards America and a collision with Doug DeWitt for the recently created, and according to some, barely significant WBO title. After taking account, Ben won convincingly. If he could do the same against Iron Barkley, who'd rubbed out Hitman Hearns, that would silence the doubters for good. What a round. It's done him again. Remember now, the three knockdown rule of WBO is in effect. If he goes down once more in this round, no, he stopped it already. But Chris Eubank wasn't at all impressed, as he was quick to let the Ben Camp know. You know I can take your boy. You're petrified, and I know you are. Your, your boy's mine. It's done. Yeah. Eubank's defensive skills have never been an issue. What the critics said was OK, but can he hit? On Saturday, he gave us the answer. Well, Eubanks is always able to back up his boast, and you can't knock an unbeaten record. Oh, I was going to say, I don't know what he's like, Dos Santos, and I don't think we're going to find out. His legs have stiffened up from that, and he's certainly not going to make the count. That was some punch on the side of the head and the ear, and he's pleased with his night's work, you can imagine. <laughs> and we can have another look at it now, and I'm sure Dos Santos would like to have another look at it coming his way. It was a good knockdown. I've no idea how good the Brazilian champion was. But, well, 20 seconds is not an all-time record, but it's close enough. This is why I shall take you out on the night of the 18th of November. You are mine, you belong to me. I am the man. Nigel Benny's talking to you. Ten, face me. Thing about him, he's all hype. He's all hype, you know, and I, I can't wait to November the 18th to give him a good, good hiding. You know, he went out there, he'd done a job on a guy. Who was it? Another Sanchez, Gomez, Lopez, who was it? Another road sweeper? Hey, I've done that before. Now I'm with the big boys. I'm there. I'm there already. He's got to prove himself, not me. Will you prove yourself, Chris? On that particular night in question, I will show that I have what it takes. This man is nothing but uh, He's just, he's the real hype. I come up the hard way. I didn't yeah, have Frank Warren. myself, boy. You had your time. Let's let's have some parliamentary procedure here, all right? Oh, God. <laughs> I didn't come up. Traits. I didn't come up the easy way. Uh, I came up hard. I didn't have Frank Warren. I didn't have Ambrose Mendy. You know, I came to Bury when I was 14 and 0. But what makes you think you can beat Nigel Benn? Because he's just a puncher. He's only got a puncher's chance. I'm a skillster. I'm a, I'm a fighter. I can punch as hard as he can. I can box, I can slug, or whatever he can. He only can, he, all, everything is loaded in my favor for this fight because, in my opinion, although he's a great puncher, he has nothing else other than that. Do you go along with that, Ambrose? That's Wendy? why. Not, not, a, not at all. Um, not at all. Nigel Ben came, he came up the hard way. You know, we're going to find out on a night who's fooling who. In my opinion, Chris Eubank uh, tries to talk as if he, he came out of uh, some Silver Spoon society. He's a kid off the street the same as us, and we're going to find out on the night just who's fooling who. In regards to Chris saying that boxing is a mugs game, we've got something to show you. It's a piece of our own artwork. Perhaps you'd like yeah. to hone in on that. It's a mugs game. And I'd say this, a Shakespearean quote for you young men to learn. How much sharper than a serpent's tooth it is to have a thankless child. That's from all the professional boxers in this country. Barry Hearn, why is this man the boxer they all love to hate? 
Well, I don't think they do. I think that's uh, an image that's been afforded to him by some of the journalists in Fleet Street. It takes a bit of time to appreciate Chris Eubank. But, you know, having said that, you know, I'm not detracting from either fighter, but we have a situation where Nigel Benn fought Michael Watson. Nigel Benn was the undefeated fighter that went in. Chris Eubank now is the undefeated fighter. He's there on merit. Uh, he is the man until he's been beaten. And uh, it's going to be a very highly competitive fight between two great athletes. At one point, I must just say, Ronaldo Santos uh, is not a Gomez or a Sanchez or a Pedro or anything. That man had never been knocked out before. And in fact, in his professional career of some 20 fights, had never visited the canvas. Chris, how <coughs> important is it to you to lay Nigel Benn on the canvas? That's not important. I've just got to be the man. It doesn't matter whether I knock him out or take him to 12 rounds and give him a boxing lesson. But why is it so important to be why? this particular man? This is the business. This is the business. And I will do what is required on the night. And not only that, if he doesn't extend me, which I'm sure he will, then I shan't do anything more than I have to do. You, well, you won't like even say, face him. Why won't you face him tonight? I'll face the man in the ring. I can face him. I'm speaking to you. You're asking me any questions. Time. Any you're time. You're asking me questions. I'm being polite and I'm facing you. I'm looking in your face. I have nothing to say to Nigel. I find the man uh, intolerable in that he's so wild. I have no time for such people. He has no class as far as I see it. Um, about Nigel Ben, I would say this. The man is a powerful puncher, a very powerful puncher. For this, I would like his autograph, because after I've finished with him, he isn't going to be anybody. Nigel Ben, will you be anybody at the end of the fight? Hey, I have to see the thing about him. I've seen both sides of the coin. Like I was saying before, when Watson kicked my butt, hey, I got up, brushed myself down. Winning fought Kinones, Jorge Amparo, um, Doug DeWitt, Aaron Barkley. But it seems that this one is working you up more than any other yeah, fight. Yeah, more, more than anyone else. I think the public is demanding this. You know, I walk down the street, people say, hey, give this boy a hiding. Well, you look, know, and, and I am determined to go out there firing on all cylinders. Well, let's make sure the fight takes place by signing the contract right now. Christopher? I have to say, there seems an element of genuine hate between these two, Ambrose. For sure. I don't hate the man. I just want his WBO title. I, I, I always, I pray that I have enough dignity not to hate the man. Exactly hate doesn't come into it for me. Hate um, destroys the game and makes it look uh, brutal, and, uh, and that's why a lot Ambrose, of people don't um, take to it. I don't hate the man. I want the man's title, and I intend to prove that I'm a better fighter than the man, which I am. All right, gentlemen, you I, I both uh, signed the contract. I personally do hate him. I personally do hate him. So is there yeah, any point in me asking you to shake hands after signing no, no, the contract? No, 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 no. no. Well, no gentlemen, all four of you, thanks for joining us tonight. Thank you. Thanks, thanks thank you. Thank you. Well, we'll have more boxing later on with Tony Acubia's double title. He's seen near Birmingham, the showdown that's gripped British boxing and promises to produce a blistering explosion of power and passion. Nigel Benn, the WBO world middleweight champion, laying his title on the line against Chris Eubank, after a build-up, even by boxing standards, of remarkably bitter mockery and vindictive taunts. Now, Ben releases a song called Stand and Fight on Monday, and we'll see a clip of the video in just a moment. But first, we can meet the man who's bet £1,000 on himself at 40 to 1 to finish it in the first round. With his slogan, I'm quite simply the best, you could never call Chris Eubank a shrinking violet. You know I can take your boy. You're petrified, and I know you are. Your, your boy's mine. It's done. Your boy, of course, being the dark destroyer, Nigel Benn, who Eubank refused to look at when the fight was clinched. Away from the ring, there's another life with Karen and Chris Jr. down in Brighton. But for now, there's one moment he can't wait for. When the referee says to me, and Nigel fired box, that's one, that is a time I'm going to cherish. Beforehand, it's only something I can anticipate. And after the fight, it's only something I've done, so what big deal? It's the only time I'm going to really be able to appreciate is action time, you know? And that's going to be special. Ben's two world title victories have definitely been special, getting off the floor to beat Doug DeWitt in Atlantic City last April, and defeating Iron Barkley four months later in Las Vegas. But Eubank's not afraid of that kind of firepower. So if you hit me, you've got to hit me skillfully. You're not going to hit me luckily. No luck at this, uh, at this level in, in pugilism. There's no luck. It'll come down to the skill what you possess. Now, if you're skillful enough to come to me in front of me, get in range and place the right hand, then good. And I will appreciate it if you can do that. But that's very, very difficult. 
to hit a skilled fighter like I am. You know, there's no luck at this level. And on that night, on that night, I will expose him for what he is. And he's a man who has not learnt the craft. He's got a punch of chance and that's all he has. Are you saying that you're a thinking man's boxer and he isn't, in a way? Well, it's evident. What does he do? He comes out bombing all the time. And the way the man speaks, he has nothing of any significance to say. He only speaks about knocking a, a person out and hate and uh, detesting people. What mentality does he have? In a, righteous and, and in a righteous and upright way, I deserve to win this fight. Not to say that it comes down to that, because it doesn't. It comes down to the skill of the fighter. But in a, in a righteous way, I, 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 I'm supposed to win this fight, because he is not portraying anything for anyone to follow. He says he hates me and he detests me. Why? I've, I've stated in the press, I did not disrespect his mother, his father, his sister, or his children, or his wife. So why, why do you hate me? Well, presumably it's because he thinks you're arrogant and that you've implied that he's a no-hoper and you're going to sort him out. Well, I, I didn't imply that it was imply that he's a no-hoper. Uh, that would be backwards for the simple reason that he's already there. He's making the money. And the business aspect of it is what he's got covered already. I'm talking about the craft and for what he's portraying to young kids out there. You understand? I mean, people say to me, what would you say to a young child? You know, would you like to be a role model? I say simply this, right? I'm not going to encourage no child out there to become a fighter. That's something I wouldn't do because this game is too hard. Because you've I'll, got a young lad of your own, haven't you? Sure. But let me just go on to say, I would say to any young man out there, go to school and endeavour to stay there because that's what makes a man. <laughs> you think because it's a mugs game, don't you? Yes, I do. It is a mugs game for the simple reason that many a fighter in this world are being exploited by managers and promoters. Now, that is a fact. A man tried to buy my contract for a plate of fish and chips, you know. He said to me, he took me to a restaurant, he said to me, the fact that, he said, you should, when you come to me, it was, it was as if he was saying to me, you should think yourself privileged that you're speaking to such a man of my calibre in this game, for the people I know and for the um, achievements what I've achieved and for the fighters I've made world champion. That means nothing to me. You understand? I'm doing something... Um, quite extraordinary. And Besides obviously being a good boxer, he talks a very good fight, doesn't he? Mm, very good, yeah. He's very intelligent. He knows exactly what he wants to say. Um, he knows what he wants to tell everyone. And he's very good at expressing himself, getting over his views. Yeah. Now, who was this? Armani one. Armani? Yeah. Ah, Mr. Armani. That's right. better. Yeah. Chris, what uh, part do your family play in your approach to boxing? I mean, the part they play is simply the part where every, every family plays, plays, you know. They must be looked after. They must be looked after. And um, I want to do that as, easy as, easy, as the, the easiest way I possibly can, which is to make a great deal of money. You know, all, all these titles, titles to me mean money. I respect a title for the glory, but I respect it more for the money. Does Karen talk boxing to you a lot? No, she, she had nothing to do with. Uh, she had nothing to do with. Trainers can't even talk to me about boxing. I know what I know. What they knew has been buried already. Because it's a science and it's always moving. So what they have to teach me, I don't listen to. I've, I'm way past that, you know. Aren't you going to put people's backs up with that sort of attitude? Yes. Yeah. The truth causes offence. But it's not a lie and I'm only speaking that truth and this is what I believe to be truth. You know? And, you know, maybe you should speak to my trainer, Ronnie, Ronnie Davis. Because he understands that he ain't got nothing to teach me. I mean, I've got moves people haven't even seen. And I know that. I just need for someone to bring that out in me. I need for someone to extend me. So please do that, Nigel. Extend me. I need to be extended. And do you reckon that uh, this Sunday is his biggest test so far? It's his biggest test and it'll be his biggest win. You're confident? Very, yeah. Well, finally, let's, let's have a message from you to Nigel Benn. A message? I'll say this to you. I shan't say anything because this is coming out on the 14th and the fight is on the 18th. So if I say anything to you, I may educate you. I'm not telling you anything. When you see me on the night, you should see me. The fact that I haven't looked at you 
once in all the press conferences we have had, the fact that I haven't spoken to you, I haven't even considered you. Maybe you think that's a flaw in my um, confidence. It's not. On the night, I should look at you. And I'm going to be caning you while I'm looking at you. Then you're going to know why I'm looking at you. That's my message. Simple as that. You are mine. <laughs> well, you can see the fight live here on ITV this Sunday night at 10.35. And if you can't get a ticket, don't despair. There are just a few left. But it should be some fight, shouldn't it? What do you make of uh, Mr Eubank then, Gary? He seems very confident. He does a bit, doesn't he? Yeah. Do you fancy that fight then? Yes, um, I think quite a few of the Spurs lads are going to go after the live game mm -hmm. um, against Everton on Sunday. I think a few of us will be going to, to watch that on the way home. Yeah. How do you think that compares with the, sort of the tension you feel, say, before a big match, international match? How would you fancy that the tension of you seeing just one man, the other side of the ring, who wants to beat seven bells out of you? Well, we've played a few games like that, actually, but... Um, Including today? Um, no, it wasn't like <laughs> that today. It was a bit physical, as they always are, but... Um, it's a, it's a hard game, boxing, isn't it? I'm no expert in it, but they have months, seem to me, to have months and months to peak to one fight where we're going consistently week in, week out. Um, and I don't think we could really say things about the opposition like they do. We'd probably get in a bit of hot water, yeah, I think. Disrepute, John. Quick prediction, then. Ben or Eubank? Oh, I'm no... I should just go and You're enjoy it. I don't want to... Yeah, I'm frightened of upsetting either one of them, actually. <laughs> <laughs> well, I hope you enjoy it, and I hope you enjoy it as well at home. Chris Eubank, obviously confident he can demolish the Dark Destroyer. Nigel Benn, certain it's all wrapped up. Good night. They ring the bell, time to go to war. When you hear 9, 10, ain't me on the floor. Because I'm the warrior that makes you sorrier. The Destroyer, I will annoy you. So good night, my friend. I just don't like him as a person. I think he's a horrible person indeed. He's an arrogant bee. And, um, you know, for someone like, you know, slagging off boxing, we don't, we don't need him in the game. Uh, if, if the Ben supporters are there in their thousands and they're against me, then I shall feel that. And that shall be directed strictly to, to you, Mr. Ben. I'll have you. <laughs>
welcome to the main arena at the National Exhibition Centre on the outskirts of Birmingham. A very big occasion here, some very famous faces are at ringside. Big Frank Bruno, who's had his share of world title fights. Paul Gascoigne, fresh from the match at Goodison this afternoon. Gaza is with us here at the NEC as well. Linford Christie, the quickest man in Europe, looking to see if Nigel Benn can produce a quick knockout here. And Terry Marsh, what a reception he got here at the NEC. I feel sure he'll be back in action very soon. Hello, good evening to you. It really is a very special occasion here at the NEC. Personally, I've never known opinions so sharply divided about a world title fight. Some of you are going for Nigel Benn because of his punching power. Ben, a man with the dynamite in his fist, really, the reigning champion. Chris Eubank, the challenger from Brighton down there on the south coast, a very different type of personality. Total self-belief has Chris and a very awkward style indeed. But Eubank absolutely convinced a slugger can never beat a craftsman. Whenever Nigel Benn's in the ring, you're guaranteed high excitement. His first defence against Iran Barclay in Las Vegas in August. It only lasted a round. Benn was shaken up. Barclay was beaten up. Benn's Britain's first ever WBO champion. He knocked Barclay off his feet three times. A brief but very effective encounter. Now, Ben's had his battles outside the ring as well with the British board. Angered by their refusal to allow his manager, Ambrose Mende, to work his corner, Ben ripped up his license. Now, there's an uneasy peace. Ambrose Mende will be with the champion tonight. Chris Eubanks a very different sort of fighter. He says he's misunderstood. He's super confident, not arrogant. In contrast to Ben, Eubank isn't a big puncher. But his last victim, the Brazilian Ronaldo dos Santos, would dispute that. He lasted under 20 seconds. Eubank's record, 24 fights, 24 wins. It's a genuine grudge match. Ben and Eubank certainly won't be exchanging Christmas cards. Ben's the biggest attraction in British boxing. Stand and fight. The video's out next week. They ring the bell, time to go to war. When you hear nine, ten, ain't me on the floor. Cause I'm the warrior that makes it sorry. The destroyer, I will annoy ya. So good night, my friend, and amen. Telling me just met Big Bad Ben. Chris Eubanks called Ben a coward and an ignorant puncher. He's convinced he'll win. Take the man's punching power away, and he's not in my class, which is plain to see. But obviously we can't do that because he has got that punching power. So therefore what you have here is a combatant intellectual boxer against the shallow-minded puncher. And so for all you people out there who bet your money on Nigel, it was a bad bet. Regardless of the outcome, it was a bad bet. Because the puncher never beats the boxer, at least he never beats the, the competent boxer. Well then, is he bluffing or is he the real thing? Will Nigel Ben punch a very big hole through all that bravado? The two fighters are just outside waiting to enter the arena here. I know you're going to rejoin us at the NEC for some outstanding action. We're back in a couple of minutes. It's uh, just about a full house here at the NEC. Got to be over 10,000 people inside this arena. And really, what an atmosphere, too. The sort of atmosphere, really, that makes uh, the old hair stand up on the back of your neck. It's a big occasion, uh, this one. A really big domestic scrap. And as you'll have heard at the start, a grudge match as well between uh, Chrissy Eubank from Brighton. Not everyone's cup of tea, a bit strutting and a bit arrogant. Had a long talk with him uh, in the gymnasium where he's working hard down there in East London on Thursday. And he said, uh, I'm not arrogant, I'm just a very, very confident fellow. He is totally convinced, Chris Eubank, he's going to be the new champion. What a noise behind me as Eubank makes his way towards the ring here at the NEC. It really... Everyone peering and waiting for the gladiators to come into 
the ring. Chris, Chris Eubank, I think I caught sight of him a few moments ago and he might be just submerged somewhere in that crowd. He's going to be the underdog here is Chris Eubank. His followers know that. They know that Ben is a more popular fighter, has got more crowd appeal and has sold probably more tickets here. But the Eubank camp feel that will inspire their man. 24 and 0 is Chris Eubank, but a lot of people on that record are under the caliber that Nigel Ben has fought in his career. And there, Chris Eubank with his uh, trainer Ronnie Davis just in front of him in the, in the red tracksuit. Eubank, simply the best, his anthem. Totally composed, totally his own man. He doesn't take advice kindly. I was with Barry McGuigan at a press conference earlier this week when McGuigan went to offer him some advice about the fight tonight. And he said, thank you very much, Barry. I know what I'm going to do. Please don't tell me anything. Chris Eubank, like Nigel Ben, has been over to America to learn his trade. He knew he was going to get this. He's totally prepared for it. Here comes the challenger. Chris Eubank. He's bet a thousand pounds at 40 to 1 that he will finish it in the first round. Here comes the Dark Destroyer. That's the second battalion of the Royal Regiment of Fusiliers and four drummers lining the route. Nigel Benn was a Lance Corporal in the 1st Battalion, boxed as a welterweight in the Army. He was undefeated and I'm sure his old battalion will be watching IGV at their base in Canterbury. We promised well an entry from Nigel Ben. First, if you can hear me above the roar, a touch of Phil Collins in the air tonight. And goodness me, there's high excitement in the Midlands air tonight, I can tell you. Nigel Bent, keeping us all waiting. I remember. And here he comes, the champion with the WBO belt. And his manager, Ambrose Mendy. They're already threatening to raise the roof here at the NEC and they haven't thrown a punch yet. This one looks as though it's going to live up to all its height. Nigel Ben, let's just wait for the reception he gets as he climbs into that ring. Ambrose Mendy with a few calming words perhaps Nigel Ben has said he hates his opponent we shall see let's join your commentators at ringside Jim Watt and first of all let's say good evening to Rich Guttridge well, hello then, and draw up your ringside seat with us. There's great expectations here, there really is. All the tinsel has gone now, all the sparring hype has gone, and really, it wasn't promotional hype in the sense that these fellas really wanted to have a go at each other. They didn't have to call press conferences. This is a genuine needle here. Ladies and gentlemen. So the MC, Alan Hughes, then. 
promoted by Matchroom in association with Top Rank and sponsored by the Daily Mirror, we are proud to present the main attraction of the evening. A middleweight contest at 11 stone 6 pounds over 12 rounds each of 3 minutes duration for the WBO Middleweight Championship of the World. Your judges for the contest are Darby Shirley of Las Vegas, John Stewart of New Jersey, and Bob Ballow of Miami in Florida. Your WBO supervisor is a Vice President Ed Levine of the United States of America. And your British Boxing Board steward in charge, their Vice Chairman Nipper Reed. Your referee for the contest is a Richard Steele of Las Vegas and your timekeeper, Harry Foxall of Stoke on Trains. Ladies and gentlemen, presenting and introducing to you in the blue corner with the white and the red shorts, with 24 wins from 24 contests, 14 inside the distance, the challenger for the title from Brighton in Sussex, Chris And ladies and gentlemen, his opponent in the red corner with the black shorts with 27 wins from 28 contests, 25 inside the distance, defending the title from West Ham in London, the WBO middleweight champion of the world, And the way at the noon today, Chris Eubank scaled 11 stone, 5 and a half pounds. Nigel Bain scaled 11 stone, 5 and 3 quarter pounds. Ladies and gentlemen, I thank you. Well, those introductions, I mean, the, the way these guys are talking, the, the fight could be shorter than the introductions. Richard Steele, famous referee in the States, 79th World Championship, his first WBO. He handled... Uh, Frank Bruno and Mike Tyson, among many others. And uh, Bruno is with us, of course, tonight. And so is Michael Nunn, the world IBF middleweight champion. Let's have a look at these fellas. So he's bet a thousand pounds he can win in the opening round here, Chris Eubank. Now, is he more show than substance? We'll find out, but don't blink in case you miss the punch. Uh, but it might be Ben that throws the punch. And that's the kind of contest this is. Build, of course, as who's fooling who. Taking a bit of time there because the inspector from the World Boxing Association is uh, handing out the coagulates. They won't let them, the seconds, bring their own. They hand it out in the corner. First time that I've seen that. Well, there it is. Now take a deep breath as we are at ringside here. And let's hope, uh, well, it lives up to half uh, the expectation of this fight. That'll do. What a, he's, an un, he's such an unusual man, this Chris Eubank. He really is. Oh, he's coming outside on. throwing punches back early. You knew Ben would come out firing, as he always does. But Eubanks is answering him, even if he is doing it on the run. He's doing it the wrong way in the first round, Reg. His hands are too low. He's very difficult to catch Eubanks, but he doesn't have a tight defence. I thought he would have tightened it up already. He looks as though he's going to try to evade the punches rather than block them, and that could be dangerous. Although he's coming back with decent shots of his own. But yeah, he's looking to win that bet, Jim. Got 40 to 1. He could win in the first. A little arrogant shake of the head there. Or confident, as he likes to call it. See, I suppose we have to remember that Ben has been shaken in most of his recent contest runs. Yeah, his recovery has been better since he was knocked over by Michael Watson. Well, what's happened, Reg, he's actually landed his own bombs before he's had to recover most of the time. 
But uh, Ben's a little bit slow getting them off the mark in the first round here. Oh, well, he's elusive enough, isn't he, Eubank? Uh, a real slippery character indeed, and of course unbeaten. Ben not quite as cavalier as we've seen him, but he looks as though he's trying to pick shots, so we can't fault him for that. No, going in and waging war recklessly, might have come off second best very early. So a minute to go in the opening round. Well, the first decent shots they landed have come from Eubank Ridge. And there's nothing wrong with his temperament, he looks very calm as they come into the ring. He really fancies the job. Well, we've never been sure with the 24 wins, really, because the opposition hasn't been that good. But this is very much a proving fight for Eubank, and in the opening round is proving very really useful. Well, he's kept Ben at bay so far. Ben's had to reach with his punches. He's not getting right in and getting the shoulder behind him. Oh, well, we don't want that to uh, the old wrestling game, two falls or a submission. So the countdown for the end of the first. And it looks like he's blown his bet there, Eubank. But with the money they're getting tonight, well, maybe it doesn't matter. Well, there's all sorts of guesses on what they're earning. So there's the rundown on the Ben then, of course. And the one loss was to Michael Watson, who's also on this card tonight. And uh, while he's been doing that, Ben, there they're just looking around there. I'm surprised that they already need the, the wash and brush up with the Vaseline there. With Percy Armstrong from America, and that's Vic Andretti, former champion, in the corner there. He seems to have done Ben a lot of good during his training in uh, in Miami. And while a lot of that was going on, uh, Chris Eubank was posing, walking around the ring. Ten seconds. Jim, it's interesting to say the Thank least. <laughs> yeah, but Eubank hasn't the tight defence I would expect him to have. He's looking to, to evade punches rather than to block them. And that obviously is dangerous with Nigel Ben. But his own punches are good and sharp in the first round. Oh, it's getting rough. See, now that, that tires a fighter out when they lean on like that, Jim, doesn't it? And then he really pushed down there. Yeah, I think he's just looking to, to mess Ben about as much as possible. Yeah, ben obviously likes a more conventional style with Doug DeWitt and uh, O'Ran Barkley, they're both stand-up sluggers that he nailed. So Ben just started to find his range at the end of the first round, he's found out a bit quicker in the second round here. So Eubank's trying to pull away from punches, Reg, and that's very dangerous for a man like this. You've got to block these punches, especially in the first three rounds. Very difficult to weigh up Eubank the whole time, do you know what I mean? He just won't let you know what he's doing, and he certainly won't let the opponent know what he's doing. Well, Ben is going to make him fight tonight, Reg. He's not going to get away with what he's got away with in the past. Ben, it's a more thoughtful approach from Ben than we've seen in the past. But he's really staying with Eubank all the way, and he's going to make him fight, Reg. I think he has more boxing ability than generally credited, Ben. After all, he did win the ABA Championships. That was a good shot, that was. This is when Ben's dangerous when he's got caught himself. See, now he's doing his slow motion act, uh, Eubank. It's incredible. He stands like a posing statue, and then he'll, he'll walk around and do a sort of Napoleonic strut. So we're into the final minute of the second then. Scheduled for 12. Oh, that was a shot, Reg. Well, Eubanks has taken that one, Reg. Yeah, he so he can take a shot. That was the one. Yeah. Other fighters have, uh, haven't stood up with punches like that from Ben, have they? That was a good shot, and that certainly got a reaction from Eubanks. That was a lovely shot, Reg. 
That's answered a lot of questions, Jim. Almost the final piece of the jigsaw, really, because I, I often wondered whether he could really take that good a punch because he's never had a puncher compared with Ben. And his, you bank uh, is going to have to come back. The punch is ready. He's not going to be able to strut. He's going to have to try and hurt Ben. He's done it, Ben. He's done Ben by the look of it. He chopped that right hand down, though. He's right above us, Ben. Almost falling down on the ring on us here. This is what we've seen Ben so dangerous from this position. Here it comes. He's always saying he likes to battle back, Ben. Well, he's got to do it here. He tried to do it with Watson, but it didn't work. Ben's legs are shaking. Oh, and good job. Richard Steele, good referee, threw himself in the middle there. And meanwhile, he, he has a little strut around there, doesn't he, Eubank? Now, that was the, a little bit of the writing on the wall, I think, there for Ben. He was bang in trouble. Well, Ben staggered back to his corner there, Reg. He was in bad shape at the end of that round. He hurt Eubank. But Eubank has taken the play right away from him again. I think uh, Eubank's uh, plan should be to go for Ben now because he's getting caught too often, he's too loose, he wants to start attacking, I think. He must have a great chance. He badly shook Ben just at the end of that round. And there are the statistics. Uh, well, you can throw those out the window at times with a, with a fight like this, can't you? Two boxing brothers, Peter and Simon. You can spell their name with an S on, but he decided to knock his the S off. Ten seconds. So they must be saying, uh, well, now listen, you know this fellow's a bit dangerous. You knew Round that when you three. came in, now you know for sure. Round three. <laughs> Suddenly had a little wobble in that second round there, Ben. In fact, quite a wobble. It was almost as if somebody had dropped the carpet from under his feet. Ben's caught him again, but Eubank is taking these punches well, Reg. So Eubank at this stage certainly looks to have a stronger chin. It's amazing, Jim, for a fellow who openly says he doesn't like the game and uh, calls it brutal and all that kind of thing. He's a, he's a brave guy. Started his career, by the way, in America only with the four-round fights, and he won them all, five of them in Atlantic City. So Eubank is still backing off, Reg, and you would think after the success he would come forward try to take the play away again. Ben is even more dangerous when you allow him to come forward. So the first minute gone then in the third round and it's quite incredible the way uh, Eubank soaked up those punches and then came straight back. Almost contempt Jim, isn't it? Yeah, his tactics are all wrong, Reg, he's getting away with it, he's doing well, but he should have a tighter defence, he's swaying away from punches, but he's taken a full bloody jab, that's the second he's took in the last couple of seconds. He really is doing it the wrong way, especially after hurting Ben so badly in the previous round. So the betting favourite was 11 to 8 on Ben. There might be a, a few twitchy backers around in this uh, quite big audience. Oh, as you say, Jim, that's when he's dangerous, isn't he? Like a wounded animal, blow flies back there, Ben. He's trying to draw Eubanks into a close quarter fight now. Well, Eubanks nailed him with a couple of nice uppercuts, but when Ben bends low, you know what's coming over, Reg, you know his hooks are coming over. That's when he's so dangerous, when he bends in front of you. So, big bad Ben. A little bit reddened around the left eye there, Jim. Notice that? Yeah, well, he's taken a few shots. I see some blood in uh, Eubank's left eye, but it's below, it's on the cheek. So it, yeah, it shouldn't be a problem. Bone. Oh, he rocked there as well. End of the third. So round four, it's getting uh, hotter by the second. And in that third round when Ben 
managed to nail Eubank, I tell you, the surprise stayed on his face after the pain had gone. Eubank always telling us he's, he's the craftsman of the two games. He's, he's got kind of an artful butchery about him, isn't he? He's very clever the way he does it. Yeah, he has a, a lovely shot from Eubank. Is he going to follow up this time? Now this is what he should have been doing, trying to back Ben up. He should never allow Nigel Ben to come forward. See, once again, that's when he's dangerous. Propped himself on the rope, so he took a few unnecessary punches. Well, none of them are necessary, but he, he really could have got away from the ropes quicker than that. He's, it's a bit worrying for Ben if he wants uh, Eubank to punch himself out. I don't think that's going to happen. See, Eubank still swaying from the waist edge and that's why he's been caught so often by Ben he's obviously, he obviously has a good chin because he's taken some crackers already but I would have thought he'd have got his hands up a little bit more and his chin down but he's swaying from the waist and that's not going to work wondered when uh, Eubank came into the ring gym whether we were going to get a kind of hit and hop it runaway type of uh, action from him but that hasn't been the case no well he certainly gave us a show edge he, he said he could do the business well he's mixing it and I want it and that was a lovely uppercut shot it shoot Eubank just as it landed but his head's cleared again oh, I think that was more of a stumble edge well no he, he banged that left hook to the ribs as well it's not and he fought Kid Milo, I noticed, Eubank didn't seem to like that uh, body punching, well who would, but uh, he showed it too much there, didn't he? And he's springing with his right hand at his, he's not throwing the, the same short tight punches that he was throwing before Eubank. He's starting to stretch, and his defences have come apart a little bit in this round, Reg. Well, he's got some durability at this stage, but uh, I don't know whether he's breathing heavy or what, it gives the impression that he is, but... Maybe that's just a normal mannerism. There's just a big mouse coming up in Ben's left eye. Yep. The soft tissue under the eye has really swelled up. Yeah, it has. I'll have to get the ice pack on that and uh, get it in the swell, as they call it, and iron it away between rounds. He's nodding to him right above us. It's almost as if Eubank's trying to talk to Ben now. That's going to be a problem with Ben's vision, Reg, if this goes much longer. Oh, that really would be a shame if injury causes a stoppage. So he goes for a walk at the end of the round, Eubank, but... Uh, oh, he had, he, had to, he had to show him back to the other corner there, Richard Stewart, the referee. Uh, ben, he, he was going back to the wrong one. That eye's given him some problem. Jim, let's have a look at some replay here now. Yeah, well, Eubank still doing the wrong thing, back and off. And that was a lovely uppercut. Now, that would have shaken quite a few people, Reg. That was as good as the shots that put Bartley over. But Eubank has taken the shots. So if things go his way tonight, then we can't say he didn't do it the hard way because he's taken some real good shots. But that was a punch that staggered him, Reg. I, I think it was much more of a balance uh, than, than he was actually hurt. But uh, Ben, a little bit more ragged now than he was earlier. That's how it so coming out, there it is, you see, almost closed, and uh, Percy Armstrong, American uh, corner man, at the time, worked that away. There it is again, he's doing that, you see. Round five. That's, that's the point I wouldn't of the fight, then, but, uh, Sorry, Jim, I, I was going to say that, you know, we talk about the toughness of Nigel Ben, but toughness isn't always related to winning in the boxing business. As I say, Reggie, I wouldn't be surprised if a lot of long rights are thrown from Eubank now, because that eye... He's in pretty bad shape, the left eye of Ben. Tell you what, Jim, it's, it'll be a problem to keep that going for 12 rounds. I meant to keep him in condition to fight for 12 rounds. Well, the nice thing about Ben, he doesn't too often have to go 12 rounds, but he's landed cracking shots and Eubank has taken well. I'm not saying he can take them indefinitely, but he's taken some beauties and he hasn't even really been shaken. Yeah, that was another one, Reg, another good right hand. Eubank takes that well again. A little bit more caution now with Ben, isn't it? So he's standing off there, trying to wait for somebody's uh, lead. 
good accurate punishment. That's the kind of boxing we expect from Eubank, making the other man miss and punishing him. Too often he's made Ben miss and then he's grabbed hold of him. I think this vision thing might be a problem with Ben now. He's getting nailed with a couple of sweet little counter punches. This could be his vision going. Picking his shots well there, Eubank. Well, this is what we expect of him. Make the other fellow miss and pin him with counters. Discourage him that little bit. Eubank not being backed up quite so much, Reggie. I think he's uh, grown in confidence that little bit. This is where he doesn't want to become arrogant. Minute to go in round five. The crowd really baying here. Just waiting for something explosive to happen. I really don't know which one uh, can do it either. He makes, I think, thinks that uh, battle plans are a distraction. He likes to, to do the old sort of throwback to bare knuckle days. Boxing skill. Ben getting caught a little bit more often as he comes in. That could be down to the pace and uh, down to the fact that he's left eye so bad this morning. Round six. I'm working feverishly there on the rather large swelling now, almost a thumb size under Ben's left eye. Another good left hook from Ben, which you bank takes again, Rich. really doing his punch picking now, he's posing in his punch picking for Eubank, what confidence is that? Well this is what Eubank is, is better at, he must have been fearing the first four rounds of this battle, he must be thinking if I get past the first four or five rounds then we come into my territory and that might be the case, and I did notice there was a little kind of friendly part of the, from Ben at the end of the, the fifth round, so uh, he certainly has respect for Eubank now if he didn't come into the ring with it, but he's not snarling quite as much as he was at the first bell. He's, he's almost saying, come on, Jim, we can read his lip from here, can't we? Yes, he, he's, back. he's teasing a bit. He's trying to do now what he should always be doing, trying to make Ben uh, be the one who makes the mistakes. He's trying to draw a lead. There he goes, draws the lead, sticks on the counter. He's taking chances the way he's swaying back from these leads, but uh, he's standing there waiting for them to come, so he's obviously confident he can cope with them. Well, he's made up his mind, uh, New Bank has got it. Oh! Now, I, I think he might make a meal of that, the damage done to Courage there. But he's saying take time off for the referee, who'll give him plenty of time to get over that. There's an obligatory foul-proof protectors have to be worn. This is not a country that has a no-foul rule. I mean, if you hit him uh, low several times, you still could disqualify him. But uh, this referee, well, it's unlikely to do that unless it gets persistent. So they are, plays resume and they, they add the extra seconds end to the end of the round. Now that was a good body punch, Jim, that yeah, second Nothing wrong with that one, Reg, that was on target. I think the, the punch he complained about might have been low, and if I had to be punched low, I wouldn't want Nigel Ben to be the one who was doing it. Ben's revved up, but moved into a different gear now. Yeah, he's juiced up now, isn't he? But he's still running on to these punches from Eubank, a nice little shot right from Eubank.
very difficult fight to read for us, Jim, really, isn't it? Because they're changing so much with each round. Yeah, well, in the last couple of rounds, Eubank has been the far more accurate of the two. I mean, it was close stuff in the first uh, three rounds, Reg. But uh, Eubank has certainly been the master. Not, not the complete master, but things have gone his way the last couple of rounds. Far more accurate. Frank, are you surprised at what's happening in this fight? I'm very surprised, but Eubanks is a very cool and calm and character and a very fit character. Nigel Ben doesn't seem like he's peaking or shining tonight, and it's a very interesting fight. Very, Let's have a look at that low punch, actually. Yeah. Um, what actually happened here? That was sent the wicket. That's certain different things like that happen in boxing, you know, when you go, that's sent the wicket. But, but accidental, do you think? Accidental, but that's boxing, you know. You go in there and it's a rough game and things like that do happen, but it's most, one of the most exciting fights I've been to, Gary, you know. Do you think that Eubank's going to win this now? I'm not too sure. If I, if I did think I'd put some money on it, it's an interest. It's either even Stevens and um, Eubanks looks a favourite at the moment. But Nigel Ben is a very dangerous guy. He can come with any even fight, even fight, Gary. Even fight. So there you are. It's great from Frank Bruno's mouth in the, in the round seven. The corner men then for Ben are still working hard to keep that swelling down. There's a lot of anxious uh, faces in that corner, particularly his uh, agent manager, Ambrose Mendy, almost leaning in the ring, calling out. Well, I think as you bank come into the ring tonight, Reg, you must have been wishing it was a seventh round because that, that obviously the early part of the fight most dangerous, well it is the seventh now so we'll see if his uh, plan of attack holds together Well there's been all sorts of estimates on how much these fellows are going to earn but they don't really know yet until they get the full takings in because they're on percentages of gate and ancillary rights etc plus of course sponsorship by the Daily Mirror Ben's got a little more edge on his attack in this round. Uh, he was kind of floundering a little bit in the sixth. Looks a little bit sharper now at the beginning of the seventh. Shield. Yes, it's not obligatory to put it back. Uh, the, the British rule has now come that if a boxer's gum shield is uh, knocked out, they can replace it, but it's the WBO Actually, Reg, rules. He just took it out and spat, and maybe some blood out or something. He had a problem with his mouth there, but he just, I think he just held the gum shield in his glove and spat out. Well, certainly, Eubanks never had his problem with his mouth, Jim, in or out of the ring. Oh, he's got, a, got him on a headlock there, isn't he? Well, I think Ben has realised the fifth and sixth weren't his best rounds, so he's, he's trying to... Oh, two good shots now. Will Ben take those, Reg? So he knows instantly, Eubank, when he's got the man in trouble. This is where Eubank must be careful. He's saying, OK, come on, now they're really... Now Ben's answering him back. I thought that would happen there. The referee might just calm them down a bit and say, I don't want any talking, I'm the only guy who's paid for the talking. Apart from the commentators. Another low that, blow, and he's going to make, to make a meal of that. But they're calling Ben on, saying, take no notice, the corner will get into him. That just looked like a borderline shot to me, Reg. Is that a little bit of uh, Eubank's character slipping there? I don't know, but that just looked like a borderline shot then. Almost exercise, Jim, that uh, swelling under the eye. Coming out for round eight. Vic Andretti in uh, Ben's corner there. Saying, I want you to weave and duck your way in under those punches. He might be closing Ben, but he's, he's not exactly pouring at some kind of unfamiliar object. He's, he's managing to get them through. I mean, you have to hand it to Ben. I mean, a few times in his career, he's had to grit his teeth, and he's always, apart from the Michael Watson thing, possibly, but he's always managed to do it and come blasting back.
surprised that Eubank hasn't tried to make better use of his jab because Ben does come straight on him. Yeah, exactly. Professes to be a master of the noble art. But, oh, what? Almost came out on our lap, Sergeant. A little bit of a slip. He's arguing with the referee. It was a slip. But there's no point in him shouting at him because he got flipped at the same time. I think it was a bit of both, Rez. It was a slip, it was a punch that caused him a slip, so you got to count. Three American judges, remember, if this does go 12. Referee doesn't vote. And uh, the three knockdown rule, if one boxer goes down three times, the same boxer in only one round, it's automatically over. And that is how Ben retained his championship last time up against uh, Iran Barkley in the opening round. Yeah, he looks just a little bit worse, Reg. They've done a good job with it in the corner, but just the swelling has gone up slightly. Minute to go in the eighth. So it's sparring for openings again, Jim. They go, they go a bit mad at times, and then they stand and look at each other like this. It's fascinating, isn't it, really? Yeah. Well, the fifth and sixth rounds, the fortune swung in Eubank's favour, and I thought he would have put the pedal down. But full credit to Ben, he came out in the seventh with a good round, and he's raised the pace and he's kept the pace up. Trying to do the referee in as well, Eubank. He's uh, showing that that was a rabbit punch back of the neck. But Richard Steele ignored it. I wonder how these judges are scoring it now, Jim. It's not too easy. As you say, Eubanks had a, a good section in the fifth and sixth there. How, how would you have it now? Well, I found it swinging about. I had been ahead after three rounds. After five, Eubank came right back in. The baby just nicked himself. And then Ben's come back in again, had a couple of good rounds. So it's really pretty even at this moment, Reg. So the referee forgot about diving in instantly, as he's been doing. Uh, but they, they just did the stare there, I'm glad to say. There was no uh, extra time punching there. Uh, Ronnie Davis there, who used to manage uh, Eubank, is working in the corner. Well, the punch came over, Reg. A punch landed. It caught, it caught him on the shoulder and the neck. It wasn't really a tremendous punch, but a punch did put him over. More of a slip. I think the referee could be forgiven for calling it a knockdown. A punch put him over. And there it is again. Now, there's a full view of that uh, swollen eye there of Ben. He's, well, that, that to me was a punch and uh, not a slip, although you objected to it, uh, Eubank. Ten seconds. And we're getting ready now. There it is for round nine. Second round. So it's all about the last furlong, as it were, and the stamina. And one trying to impose his will on the other one, as well as his skill. The IBF champion right behind us here must be weighing this one up as a, a potential opponent, potential challenger. There's already plans if Ben wins from the fight, Steve Collins, the, the Dubliner who fights in the States and has cha already challenged for the world title. Eubank is becoming a little bit negative now, Reg. You threw a punch and missed and he ducked a wee down. You know, he's, he's not quite as positive in his approach in this round as he's been earlier. He's going to have to psych himself up. Maybe he needs to land a couple of shots like that just to bring his confidence back. He has finished the 12 rounder actually. Uh, we bank against an Argentinian, but that was uh, an easily forgotten fight, actually. Ben would like to be able to work to the body a bit more, Jim, wouldn't he, and make the head fall. But he tucked his arms closely in there, you bank. Not easy to nail him. Especially yeah. as he's always moving, circling. Yeah, well, against awkward day fighters who move like you bank, it's sometimes good policy to go to the body, but it's maybe a little bit late for that now, Reg. I think uh, Ben has to keep doing what he's doing, just keep forcing him back and try to out-punch him, keep his punch rate higher than Eubanks. So Eubank wants to slow the pace, to fight in little bursts, pick away, a couple of punches, then back on his bike again. Ben has to raise the pace and maintain it. Just 
He's a bit of a manager, Jim, isn't he? Yeah, which is usually a good sign for the other, the other fellow. When your opponent moans to the referee, it usually means he's not too happy, things aren't going his way. I remember when your manager would say that to fighters in the corner, stop feeling sorry for yourself. Well, Ben is the one at the moment who has been prepared to, to grit his teeth and show how much he wants this championship. You bank just a little bit negative. Well, a flat punch landed on the back of his leg actually as he was falling. I think he was falling for that. That was Ben. Oh, what a shot that shot was. Shot really Opened him up with the left hand and then shot the right hand over and it connected. There's the countdown. If he did go down, the count would continue. Except ben, Ben's shaking, Reg. Oh, ben right to his boots, Jim. Ben is shaking. The eyes wash, Reg. This would be the finish of the belt. It's, it's all over it. in the ninth round. And would you believe in uh, Ben's corner, they looked as though they were objecting to that for a minute. Why was it stopped? But I think he was right to dive in there, apart from the, the eye closing, uh, he was also getting punished at that point, Jim. Reg, Ben was finished at that point. The only thing that was going to save him was the bell. He wasn't going to save himself. And when the bell is going to ring, it's nothing to do with the referee. When a fighter is out of a fight to stay, he's got to stop the fight. Bad luck for Ben. A few seconds later, the bell would have rung, probably got him recovered again. But that was a tremendous left-hand shot that, that shook him. Eubank, to me, had become a little bit negative, but he'll probably tell us later that he bided his time and he knew it was coming, but we'll see what he says. But a tremendous finish. Well done, Eubank. Yeah, I must say, he answered all the questions as far as I was concerned, because I have to say I was terribly confused about Eubank. Seen him quite a few times, never sure whether he was a really good fighter or not. Uh, but it looked there, I tell you, he's, he's taken good shots, he's done a bit of acting, but, uh, well, you can always do that. I mean, Ali did, but, of course, he was uh, exceptional. So the formal announcement then. Well, nobody can be begrudge you, you bank a victory, Reg. He took his best shots. He boxed well, he boxed the way he wanted to box. He controlled the action. A lovely performance from him. Well, he's crying with joy there, promoter Barry Hearn. And here's Gary Newborn. Chris, congratulations, that was a brilliant victory. Unexpected by a lot of people, but you said all along you would win. Here, here, here. Well, I've never known you lost for words, and I know you're very emotional, but we'd love to know all about that back at home. He's the hardest punch I've ever seen. He's the hardest punch I've ever come up against in my life. I don't know. I beat him, I beat him on determination. Karen, I told you I'd do it. Well, I don't suppose I did, but I knew I'd do it. He was good, but uh, yeah, I'd suck with it, and uh, he, he hurt me, he hurt me bad, man, but he's good. But I told you my chin, my chin is cast iron. I told you they couldn't touch it. If is anyone it? can touch somebody's chin, it's Nigel Ben. Karen, can we get married now? <laughs> can this, we get married? Listen, oh, this is a new side. Marry me, Karen. This. You want to get married now? Yeah, I want to get married. Well, you're in all sorts of emotions. Can I just say this? You are crying now. Now, all we've seen is an arrogant Chris Eubank. This is a, an he, emotional Chris Eubank. Yeah, he, he extended me like I've never known one could be extended. He's a, he's definitely, the man is just an animal. I mean, his he's strength, an animal. He's, no, he's not an animal. He's a, you come over to me, you shake hands and that. He's a, he's an unbelievable puncher. And uh, I have, I mean, I said I wouldn't embrace him or anything, but... You see, he's won my respect, you see, because he hurt me up the guts. He opened my tongue, my tongue's open. But my tongue's open, he hit me with shots I never knew existed. But, but you keep saying that, but the thing about this fight is you have hit him with so many shots that have had him rocking. Listen, this man ain't chinny. Chinny? This man can't be chinny, I hit him with everything, man. Karen, I've done it. Dad, I love you, Dad, I've done it. I've done come it. On, well, come on, It's an amazing performance, and it's surprised a lot of people. I need to go to a hospital. Yes. Well, Thank you. You can see the end of it, actually. Listen, I'm sure you'd love to see the end of it. <laughs> Chris? Yeah? Talk to us about it. Uh, I, I, my corner, Ronnie, Ronnie Davis kept on telling me the, the, the one, two, the left, the straight left and right, right hand. Uh, the right hand over the top, or the straight right hand, and uh, it, I just kept on trying. He said I was going to lose it, so I could nick it, but I was going to lose it. But this man, 
This man is a phenomenal puncher. Don't, don't give up, Nigel. You said you going to quit. But Chris, Michael Nunn was Sanchez. watching at ringside. Now, looking at if you're going to go forward, you're going to have to start keeping your guard up. Sometimes my guard being down helps. I, I don't know. I'm, I'm, too, I'm in too much pain to talk, really. What? Pain? I'm in too much pain to talk. Excruciating, this Okay, thank you very much indeed. The new WBO middleweight champion of the world. Sounds good, doesn't it? Dad, I've done it. Pia! Pia Eubank, I've done it. You said I couldn't do it, I've done it, man. Keep going. Ben, Ben. Stuart! I've got Ben. Nigel. He was uh, addressing the audience there, Nigel Ben, actually. And uh, we couldn't catch that with all the bedlam that was going on. As you can see, the ring the ring looks like a, the London Underground in a rush hour. It always does. Uh, they do their best, the charity boys, to keep them out. But uh, there are always people who, sh who shouldn't be in there. So I wonder what the Boxing Board of Control are thinking now. They're, they're not club members yet of the WBO. Well, Nigel, your dreams have gone out the window there. No, my dreams haven't gone out the window. It's just that I thought Chris Eubanks is tougher than what I expected. He caught me in a, about the fourth round in my eye. I couldn't see a thing. But not taking nothing away from Eubanks. What a tremendous fighter he is. He deserve it, man. He deserve it. Well, you know, I don't know. Now I go home, sit down, decide what I'm doing. But um, I don't know no more. Honestly, I don't know. The man beat me good, very square. Did you, did you underestimate him? No, I didn't. I, over, I overestimated him. And um, it turned out that this guy was tough, tough. Gave him caught too much me, respect. You know, and he caught me with some shots. But, you know, good luck to him. You know, uh, all I can say really, you know, I, I, I do detest Chris Eubanks, you know, more than anybody else. But, you know, I can't knock him for the way he worked. And uh, now I go home, see my daughter, I'm just in Barbados. And... Nigel, I know it's very disappointing for you. Just talk about the fight for a moment. I mean, there were times when you were in a bit of trouble. Oh, well, a lot of trouble. Mean? What do you mean about a little bit of trouble? A lot of trouble. Well, yeah, of course I was. And that's why I got stopped. You know, I was in a lot of trouble. But, you know, that's what you go through. This is the second defeat that I've had. And um, I don't know no more. What, you said uh, at the press conference beforehand that you're going to hang up your gloves if you lose. Is that going to be the case? You said you were going to. I want to, but my manager don't want me to. Well, Last Gary, let me answer that. Let me answer that quickly. First of all, Nigel Ben employs me. He Ladies fought tonight, but he fought the wrong kind of fight. His disillusion, his problem really is. He just Last five seconds. He grossly overestimated Chris, but Chris Eubank won. Tomorrow morning we'll sit back. And we'll talk about it. I think Nigel will be back. There's a lot of fire in the oven yet. Okay. I'd just like to say. Just saying that, Rose, we're running out of time. Thank you. Well, one proof that boxing is the toughest game of all. I think we've seen it here at the NEC tonight. What a fight. And uh, let's hope that Nigel Ben does indeed get back uh, into the ring once again. I think we could all stand for Ben Eubank, too. We've got more World Championship boxing here on ITV next Saturday. Harold Graham against Julian Jackson for the WBC Middleweight Championship. ITV uh, next Saturday night. That's it then from the NEC. Good night to you all.